Okay, I'd like to tell you about the force on a current carrying wire now. Force on a current carrying wire. So if you have a, a magnetic field, um, let's say it looks like this, going into the page. And if I were to put a, a wire in there, then the part of the wire that's actually in the field will feel the force. Now if the current's going this way, to figure out the direction of the force, just, you know, current's positive charge. So pretend like it's just positive charge moving this way. So if I put my thumb in that direction, now my finger's got to go into the page. So apparently the force is up. See, it's going, heading that way. My fingers are the field going into the page. So this gets pushed up. So that's a force upward. The magnetic force is up. And so, um, the amount of force that it has is um, let's let's see if we can figure out what this is. The force is going to be I, how much current there is, times L, the length of the wire that's in the field, the part of the wire that's in the field, the, cross B, where um, it, L has got a direction that's the same as the current. So I'm going to give L. It's going to have this unit this this vector nature to it that's in the direction of the field and then times b so you see how l and b are perpendicular one is in and the and l is this way so they're perpendicular so that that would normally be i l b sine of theta okay but in this case it's just i l b hey if you're wondering where this comes from this is like um, f is equal to i is delta q over delta t times L cross B. How about we get rid of the cross product for right now and just talk about L and B. Okay, bring the Q, um, it's, bring the Q outside of there. And the L over the delta T times B. So you see how this is like Q, V, B except for a wire, it's ILB. So I call that FILB. The force on a wire is I times L times B. But it's really derived from the force is equal to QV cross B. Okay, again, where does that come from? Um, this, is, this is like DX DT. And so um, you can work your way backward and, and get FILB. All right, now... It turns out then that if you have a wire that's in a, a magnetic field and the, and the wire has a loop to it, it's a loop, then um, let's see what you get. Um, let's have the wire look like this. It's going to go in like this and then loop around this way and come back this way. Okay, so that's the wire. Perfect. Perfect, and then I'm going to have um, I'm going to have this on a spindle. So that loop is on a spindle. That's an axis. So the thing can turn. It can turn like this, boom, 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 like that. Okay, and I'm going to have um, current flowing this way. So here's the current. So that's I. And um, let's put a magnetic field going this way. So this is B. Uniform magnetic field. Okay. Now um, let's look at this a segment of the wire at a time. Okay. So the wire is, um, the current's heading that way for this part of the wire. I'm only looking at this part of the wire now. It's heading that way. So if I put my fingers in the direction of the field and my thumb in the direction of the current, it looks like this gets pushed down. So this is a there's a force into the page. This thing is going to be pushed into the page. So this, the force is going to be um, X for, that's the direction of the force. It's into the page. So that's the force. And it's, it's X because it's into the page. Now this, there'll be no force on it because, uh, let's see, L is this way and B is this way. So how much of L is perpendicular to B? None of it. So the cross product gives you zero. And then coming out this way, 
this is going to, um, let's see, that is going to experience a force, put my fingers that way, and my thumb will be in the direction of the current, and so that's going to get pushed out at us. And so this is, the force is uh, as a dot. That's going to come out at us. So this thing is going to rotate like this. It's, this one will be pushed down, and this will be pushed in up, um, up at us. So it's going to rotate like that. Shoomp. So when I put current in, it's going to rotate it. Okay. So um, this is, might be considered a loop of wire or a coil of wire. Okay. In fact, let's have the current come in like this. And uh, we can talk about the length of this, the length of this wire as being um, L. I'll call this length L. And I'll call this distance, I'll call that, say, um, how about X? That's X, that distance is X. Okay. So I'd like to talk about the torque on this wire. So the torque on this wire, the, we got two torques. One is on this side pushing downward and the other is on, on this side pushing upward. And so um, let's figure out what the torque is. The torque on the left side is going to be R cross F, where uh, this is R, this distance is R. So that's our X. So I'm going to just say the torque on the left side is going to be x times the force. Now the force is just going to be filled, so that's going to be um, I L cross B, I L B. I'll say cross B. Okay, so that's the torque. So it's I L cross B. And then um, that's just from the one side. Hey, when this goes down a little bit, when it's moved, moved down like this, do you see how the field is still perpendicular to L? Even when this rotates like this, even like that, the field is still perpendicular to L. So when it moves like that, the, the field is still going that way, and that's perpendicular to my thumb. Okay, so um, we can get rid of the cross product. And so the torque on the left is just X times I times L times B. The torque on the right is the same. It adds to it. So the torque, the total torque is going to be just both of these add together. So it'll be 2x times i times l times b. Now, um, one thing about this, it, 2x is this distance. That's 2x. And l is this distance. And you see how 2x times l is the area? So the torque is going to be, if I take out the 2x times L, that's area. So the torque is going to be I times the area, meaning this area, times B. Okay, so the torque is I times A times B. Now, this is a motor effect, which this is how a motor spins. You put, you put it in a magnetic field, you put current through it, and it spins it. But um, here's the deal, is if you, if you make the, um, the, if you put more loops in there, like say you have five loops doing this, you get five times the torque. And so the, nu the number of hoops that you put in here uh, makes a big difference with how much torque. And so the total torque you get is just um, going to be how many hoops you have, how many loops, times I times A times B. You want to get twice as much torque, put twice as many loops. So it's I, N, I, A, B. Um, that's the torque that you get. Now there's one other thing, and that is um, it's times the sine of theta. And I'll tell you where that sine of theta comes from. It comes from this R cross F is really RF sine of theta. Where theta is the angle between R and F. So R is this distance and F is downward. I'll tell you more about that either on another video or in class. Okay, see you soon.